I know it's been a while. Uh, tonight or this evening, I'm going to be making one of my most favorite, favorite dishes. It's called uh, pollo poblano and it uses uh, chile pasilla, which is, uh, uh, they call them chiles poblanos, they call them, uh, um, they use them for uh, chile rellenos. Um, it just depends, but I think the official name is chile pasilla. And uh, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a mole out of this. And the name mole means to moler, which means to grind. So I'm gonna essentially grind this down into a sauce that I'm gonna mix with a few other ingredients. And uh, it's just amazing science uh, when, we, when we grind this down, mix it up and uh, pair it with a couple other things. So I hope you enjoy that. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be roasting the chiles. And when we roast the chiles, what, what you're actually doing is getting the, uh, the chilies and your... So now we're gonna roast these chilies just pretty much want to char the outside a bit and what this does is not only does it enhance the flavor um, it loosens up the skin it kind of cooks the chili and oh man it smells so good I wish you guys could smell it, it smells delicious The important thing is, is when you're cutting the chilies, do not leave the stem on. Do not leave the stem on. And the reason is, is because it'll make your chili come out tasting very, very bitter. So, do not leave the stem on. Cut it out. I usually take out the whole little top part like that and um, some people like to uh, take off all the skin I usually don't sometimes I do sometimes I don't but today if you do you can just do it like that just kind of like get a knife and it usually comes off pretty good That's just how you do it, if you plan on doing that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Today, I don't think I am. You can if you want. And uh, I love the color, isn't that so awesome? It's so beautiful. I don't even know what color that is, like a dark green. But it gives it even different green once the skin's off and it's kind of charred a little bit, a little cooked. So cool. All right, I'll throw these in the mixer.
now that I have it nice and smooth, I'll, uh, you can kind of see it a little bit. Kind of see it, not really. The light's kind of purple here, sorry. There it is. Um, it kind of looks like a Gorilla Liquified guacamole. Um, all right, so now we'll go ahead and get the sauce ready. So the next ingredient is this one right here. It's called Crema Mexicana. The brand that I like to use is called Cacique. So this is pretty much like a heavy cream, Mexican cream. It's a little, I don't know, maybe a little tangy. It's really delicious. So I use this whole thing and I just mix it right in there. I used to measure everything, but since I've been making it so long, I just kind of it's I just kind of go by taste now. Really delicious cream. So you'll notice right away the color is gonna change. It's gonna get lighter. And then the last ingredient is butter. Um, I use, don't use margarine. Uh, just use regular butter. Um, this is local butter. Um, if you can use um, like you know like Irish cream or some some artisan butter that you might have available locally, then go for it. So I usually do one stick of butter and one thing of cream. And I just keep on mixing it until it all melts. And once it all melts, um, I let it, you let it cook like this, kind of on low, I have it on. So if, it go, if your stove goes from one to like 10, I'll probably go like five. Um, and just kind of let it, let it all melt. You can find that stick of butter, it's getting small. Keep on stirring that. The next ingredient that I use is salt. Now, again, this is just a regular sea salt. And uh, I don't know where I bought this at. But I just kind of do like a, I don't know, what is that, like a tablespoon? Maybe. Just to kind of bring out those flavors of the chilies. And uh, usually, with the salt that's in the butter and in the cream, and with this amount of chilies that I use, I think I use about I don't know, 15. I don't remember exactly how many I used, but I usually use around anywhere between 12 and 15 chilies. Um, and I mix it up really good. Looks like I think the butter's gone. I think it's melted. One thing that you want to always do is never let this, um, never let this overcook because of the cream and the butter. Um, you want to keep on stirring. That's one thing that's super important with this. 
you have to keep on straining. So what I'll do is keep on stirring this for a little while and then um, I'll come back right now and show you how I get the chicken ready. And we'll go ahead and you can usually prepare this a day ahead of time before you actually do your, your dish. Um, I'm going to be making this with chicken tenderloins. So we'll go from there. All right. So after you Get your chilies all ground up and you add your butter and your cream. Um, I always get chicken tenderloins and these are these are from a uh, local store here. They're supposedly uh, uh, what's the no antibiotics and all that fun stuff. So I've made this at our house in Mexico and used a farm-raised chicken and wow, what a huge difference. So good. Um, you can really taste the difference between chickens that are, I don't know, I guess in a cage. I don't know what, what uh, you would say, but yeah, total difference. So I make these tenderloins up. Put them in the oven, cook them down. I salt and pepper them and uh, put them in the oven and let them cook. I put a little bit of butter on them and let them cook. And then after I'll pull them out and we'll get to the next step. I just uh, added some pepper and now I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. And a little trick that you can do is you can grate your butter because you don't want to put that much on it just a little bit kind of looks like cheese but you can grate it on there and once you do that so now that we've pretty much finished the chicken you can see here that it's pretty much almost done. Um, it's a little pink in some spots, but uh, you can get your sauce, and I like to scoop my sauce on here and put it on here generously, you know, because the sauce really, really is the, the flavor of the dish. These chilies all ground up and with butter and cream. I don't know exactly what it is, but it just makes something so delicious, so tasty. So I just like to cover all the chicken, just cover it up really nice, get it all uh, covered, and then once you get it all nice and covered, then you can actually start to do uh, the cheese. And when I do the cheese, I there's three types of cheeses you can use. You can use uh, mozzarella, the low moisture mozzarella. Kind of hot still. Um, I like to, I'm, that's what I'm gonna use today is low moisture mozzarella. So I just like to piece it on. But you can use Oaxacan cheese. You can use like a Monterey Jack cheese, which is really good. Um, I just, you know, just kind of put it on there all around. You could shred it up. This one's this one's uh, has fresh mozzarella, so I'm just kind of ripping it and putting it on here. But um, you can use those three different types of cheeses and you know, just put it on top. And I like to put it in the oven. And once I leave it in the oven, I uh, I let it leave it in there for like 10-15 minutes. Wow! Doesn't this look amazing? Uh, nice and crispy cheese. Pair this with some Spanish rice and some pinto beans and you'll be in heaven.